Could the Vikings be signing linebacker Quan Alexander? Well, Quan actually had a workout with Minnesota yesterday, and all the signs are pointing to he may uh, be ending up with the Minnesota Vikings this season. Then also, I went and I looked at all the latest power rankings from some of the biggest media publications out there like ESPN, Sports Illustrated, CBS Sports, and I just wanted to see where the Vikings stand in those power rankings and also talk about it. Are the Vikings pretenders or are they contenders? That's coming up here in a second. But I want you to get uh, you guys an updated look at our week three super, uh, sub battle, not super chat battle. But right now, Vikings now, we have picked up 78 subs this week where our Texans Today show has only picked up 54. So I want to beat them on the field on Sunday, but also beat them within the walls here at Chat Sports. If you guys haven't already, hit that sub button. I put the goal as 100 subs on today's show. So if you guys want to help me out and make me look good for my bosses, hit that sub button. It's a free and easy way to support the show. Let's start off with the Quan Alexander workout. So this was tweeted out by Aaron Wilson yesterday as he said the Vikings have worked out Quan Alexander. Ekoi Boy Doe. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Apologies if I pronounce that wrong. But also Caleb Johnson and Demarion Williams. But I do want to focus in on Quan Alexander as he is really the only player on this list that I think has a chance to make the roster. So he is 30 years old, height and weight at six foot one, 227 pounds. Now he was a fourth round pick a, uh, many years ago, actually, uh, pick 124. And he last played with the Steelers in 2023 this past season. Did not get signed before training camp, still is unsigned. And the Vikings brought him in for a workout. But let's talk about the numbers here for Quan um, first. So last season with the Steelers, he is definitely not the same guy that he once was when he was with like the 49ers and the Saints. Because when he was with both those uh, organizations, he was a very physical downhill linebacker. We could also blitz off the edge. And he was honestly one of my favorite players to watch, more specifically when he was with the um, San Francisco 49ers. But this past year with the Steelers, in only nine games, he didn't really do much in the stat sheet. You know, he had 41 tackles, five tackles for loss, which is okay. He had an interception, also had uh, a sack there as well. But this is going to be the key word, and this is the key word with Brian Flores' defense, versatility. Quan Alexander is a very, very versatile linebacker. But let's kick it over to PFF here. They, they've graded him out pretty much the same over the last five years. No real big differences. You know, his overall grades have floated around that 59 to 63 range. He has actually struggled in the run defense part of um, PFF's grading. But honestly, I think that's I've seen not a good thing. But with the Vikings two linebackers, Pace and Cashman, you can almost – you know, make up for Quan not being the best, you know, run uh, defending linebacker. But the two stats I want to focus in on here, the pass rush grade and the coverage grade on the far right of your screen. He is rated, uh, he is graded out very highly in both these categories over the last five years. And those are two position or two things from the Vikings linebacking core that I don't think they necessarily have. I think Cashman's a great coverage linebacker, but Pace isn't. And I think Pace is a great blitzing linebacker and Cashman is is as well, but maybe not as good as a guy like Quan Alexander is. Now, I also do think this could be a depth thing for the Vikings because Gruyere Hill, he doesn't play too much. Brian Asamoah doesn't play too much. So maybe the Vikings are a little concerned if Pace or Cashman would have to miss time that they would have to uh, put in one of those backups. And I don't really think they would be the biggest fan of it. So that's why this, I would love this move. Give me Quan Alexander on the Vikings. I'm not saying this is a needle moving move where it's like, oh, we just got Quan Alexander. We're going to the Super Bowl. He's not the same guy he once was, but I also think he he I also think he would bring a sense of physicality, a sense of just urgency to this team, and he also brings some leadership. I think he would be a great locker room guy. He plays with swagger. He plays with confidence, and I think that's what you need to play in this Brian Flores system, and he is a Brian Flores guy, like a linebacker who can get after the quarterback. He can drop in the coverage. Yes, he is not the best in terms of a – you know, a run defending linebacker, but the Vikings already have some guys who are great at that. And I think if you just add him next to a guy like Blake Cashman, it would be great. And Cashman's off to a great start to this season. And if you just add more talent and just add more depth to this linebacker room, you just make this front seven a whole lot better. Now, Cashman's been unreal this season. Nine tackles, he has a sack, three PBUs, and, you know, PFF is loving what he's doing. 81.2 overall grade and graded out 88.9 in coverage so far and 
know, if you would add Quan Alexander to a Vikings front seven that is already very much legit. Like, you know, that was honestly one of my bigger concerns heading into the year is how physical the front seven would feel, how dominant they would feel. I thought they were about a middle-of-the-pack group, and if you want to be a top-five defense in the league, I think you need your front seven to truly, truly be legit. So I think adding a guy like Quan Alexander would definitely help the Vikings. Um, but again, it's not going to be a huge needle-moving move, but – you know, you're just adding more talent to this defense, and in my opinion, I am, you know, very much excited to watch this team play. Now, you know, also about this front seven, one quick note, I am still waiting for the Levi-Drake Rodriguez game. He has not been active over the last two games, but it was just a thought I had earlier today. He looked great in the preseason. Maybe if one of the Vikings' interior defensive linemen were to go down, then Levi steps in and has his awesome game, but... That's just the point about the Vikings front seven is like they got depth behind these guys. Maybe not as much as the, uh, at the linebacker group, but uh, also at the defensive tackle. Um, I mean, Taki Taimani, you know, he had a couple nice plays against the San Francisco 49ers. Jalen Redmond, he popped in the preseason. Then we just talked about uh, LDR. Like, I'm excited to watch him play. But, you know, overall, I think this Vikings front seven has definitely impressed me this season. And just adding a guy like Quan Alexander – I think would be a very, very good move. But, hey, you guys let me know. Would you sign Quan Alexander? Give me an S for sign or a P for pass down below in the comment section. Curious to see what you guys have to say. Coming up next year on the show, are the Minnesota Vikings contenders or are they pretenders? I'll give you guys my thoughts and go over some power rankings that have came out over the last couple of days. But before we dive into that, I do want to give a massive, massive shout out to today's presenting sponsor, and that is Factor. If you guys head to factormeals.com slash VikingsChat50 and use code VikingsChat50, you guys will get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code VikingsChat50 at factormeals.com slash VikingsChat50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Now, Factor offers 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week. You will always have new flavors to explore. So if you guys want to crush your wellness goals this month with dietitian approved meals and ingredients you can trust, Factor Meals is the move. Now, make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert and stay fueled with easy options from Factor. And if you guys even want to treat yourself to restaurant-quality meals that feature premium ingredients, like a filet, shrimp, or blackened salmon, Factor Meals offers that as well. So head to factormeals.com slash VikingsChat50 and use code VikingsChat50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code VikingsChat50 at factormeals.com slash VikingsChat50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. That link for you guys is in the comment section and description of today's show. So is this a fluke start for the Minnesota Vikings or are they a legit Super Bowl contender? Well, if I was looking across the whole NFL, I think the Vikings have put out some of the best tapes so far throughout this NFL season. Like, I think it's not just the record for the Vikings, which is why, you know, people are finally starting to hop on this bandwagon, but it's just the tape. I mean, you handled the Giants for all four quarters. You handled the 49ers for all four quarters. The score looked a little closer because Fred Warner decided to go Superman in that game and keep San Francisco in it. But I think the Vikings, just on tape, when you're watching the All-22, they have put out the best film. And it gets me back to this. And this is the whole shebang with the Minnesota Vikings. If Sam Darnold plays like a top-12 quarterback in the NFL just this season, they can win a Super Bowl. And I fully mean that. Like, I think we've noticed across the NFL the last couple of years, and more specifically with the Niners, like, Brock Purdy, I don't think he's a top 15 talent at the quarterback position, but he runs that offense extremely, extremely well. And if Sam Darnold can do that with this Vikings team, with the weapons, with the defense, they can 100% win the Super Bowl this season. I fully mean that. A couple of you guys are probably looking at me crazy right now, but if Darnold plays like a top 12 QB, I'm not kidding. The Vikings could be hoisting the Lombardi. But I do want to check out some of the power rankings across other publications. So the Athletic actually have the Vikings coming in as the seventh best team in the league, which is up from 14 the week before. CBS Sports showing a lot of love to the Minnesota Vikings. Have them moved up or had them moving up 13 spots this past week from 18 to 5. NFL.com not believing in the Vikings 
uh, too much so far as they only have him at 15th in the power rankings. ESPN at 11, and Pro Football Talk, shout out Mike Florio, has them at 11 as well. But I actually want to get you guys my power rankings to close out today's show. Um, again, these are not the standings. These are my power rankings. So we are going to start off here with a couple of 0-2 teams, actually. I got the Cincinnati Bengals at 10, and I got the Baltimore Ravens at number 9. You know, still a believer in both these ball clubs. I just think the Bengals, you know, they messed around with the Patriots week one. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Chiefs in Kansas City last week. I think they'll figure it out. Very similar with the Ravens. You know, they were went head-to-head -head and almost won a game in Kansas City, and then they should have beat the Raiders last week, but they fell apart. But I think both those teams will turn it around. Then I have another shocker in the NFL. How about the New Orleans Saints? They got the best offense in the league right now. I got them at eighth in my power rankings. Then I got the Detroit Lions, still a division rival. I'm still a believer in them. Uh, I just think it was a uh, you know, bad loss this past week to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but you know, I still think they're a tremendous football team, top to bottom, great coaching staff. I still think Detroit you know, has a chance to do big things this year. But the team that I did not expect to be this good early is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Their win against the Detroit Lions last week was fantastic. Going into Detroit with four of your five starters out in your secondary – is incredible. So that's why I got them at number six. Then I got to put Jim Harbaugh and the Los Angeles Chargers at five. You know, I just think it's simple. It is a coach, quarterback, offensive, defensive line league. They are A plus at all of those positions. They can run the ball. They got the league's leading rushers so far in J.K. Dobbins. I think the Chargers are just only going to get better as the year goes on. But number four for me, I got the Minnesota Vikings. And, you know, I wanted to put them higher, but I just can't right now. But I do think the Vikings have an argument. You know, throughout the first two weeks, to say we are the fourth or yeah, fourth best team in the NFL. You handle the Giants in week one on the road. Then you handle the 49ers at home. Hey, call me biased. Say I'm drinking too much purple Kool-Aid, but I got Minnesota at number four. Now, number three for me was actually my uh Super Bowl team uh before the season. I got the Buffalo Bills. I think their identity um of going to a complete ground game and like power run team was great for him moving off Stefan Diggs I thought was a great move because now Josh Allen can kind of just play you know a little feel a uh, little field general at the quarterback position instead of trying to have to force the ball to a wide receiver and Stefan Diggs but I do actually have Diggs at number two I think the Houston Texans are a wagon of a team I think you can make the argument they are the best team in the NFL right now they have one of the best defenses they have one of the best quarterbacks. They have one of the best coaching staffs. They have some of the best weapons. A little shaky at the offensive line. Maybe the Vikes can take advantage this weekend, but they got a great ball club down there in Houston. And then, of course, I have to have the Kansas City Chiefs at 2-0. Even though they were a couple of plays away from being 0-2, and I think people would have been freaking out uh, if Likely's foot got inbounds or if the Bengals didn't have that stupid uh, defensive pass interference at the end of that game. But... Those are my power rankings right now. You guys let me know, though. The Vikings are the blank best team in the NFL. I got them at fourth right now. Crazy, crazy to even say that out loud. If you, know, if you would have told me that a month ago, be like, hey, you're going to be talking about the Vikings being a top five team in the league, I would have said you're crazy. But, you know, life in the NFL changes so fast. And I think the Vikings are definitely proving themselves. So you guys let me know. Vikes are the blank best team in the NFL. And if you guys want to give me a follow on Twitter as well, that's the handle. Um... At Pat Seeps, if you guys give me a follow over there, I'll give you guys a follow right back. But thank you guys so much for watching today's show. As always, Skull Vikes.